dear provost, dear professors, ladies and gentlemen. My topic is developing spatial sound techniques for human listeners and not for rabbits or uh, hedgehogs. But, uh, and uh, there's a clear reason why I have this <laughs> yo-yo. Um, but first, uh, I put my career here. So just to highlight that I first made my masters uh, in uh, TKK and then I went to Sibelius Academy to study some music and then I made a comeback to TKK to, because I need some money. I, then I was kind of sucked into this acoustic uh, laboratory to work on something and then I made my PhD and then after it I have been chaining different kinds of uh, uh, ways to find myself to, uh, to, to stay in TKK and in Otaniemi for a long time and uh, I have been quite successful and I have a quite nice uh, group of researchers now going there. And I have been in also in Berkeley for four months and in Denmark for two months if you are interested in my uh, studies abroad as Aalto wants to know it. But what is spatial sound? Um, uh, you can, or it comes from evolution. Actually, sp uh, sp spatial sound perception uh, was evolved in the same time when we evolved the hearing with tympanic membrane. So, if you are out, you are in a, having with the horse somewhere. You you are able you you hear things like clip clop and whatever happens around there. Well, there's a birds are in the sky and quack is heard from the lake. So immediately when you hear something, you have an idea that what is that sound, what caused that sound and where is it? And of course it's in important that uh, uh, to know if that's something that you are interested in to find some food maybe or if it's uh, something dangerous like a tiger or something, you want to avoid it. So it's very important that you, you localize that tiger perfectly and start to run in other direction <coughs> uh, where it is. So, but uh, how do we do it then? Uh, if we take eye, a human eye, so we have a lens there and when we have a light bulb here, all the light goes to one position in the retina. And that means that those cells here are directly uh, sensitive to direction of sound. They know where this, this light is coming from. And, but of course, when it is a lens, it passes through only very few uh, wavelengths from the light and it's very limited number of colors that we see. We see about three colors, main colors. But uh, ear is very different. So we have a, a ear is basically a, only a hole. So the so sound goes in through that ear canal and then we have the uh, membrane there what is sensitive to the sound. But the one ear alone doesn't know too much of uh, direction but still we can hear it. So whatever some happens somewhere, you are localizing it immediately. So uh, but somehow we do it. But the nice thing in hearing is that we are responsive to very large range of wavelengths. So we can hear very low frequencies and high frequencies. And if we compare to colors, we hear about 42 colors with hearing compared to three colors in vision. So we have more frequencies, but uh, the spatial resolution is different. But what makes it very in interesting in science and uh, in audio, in uh, techniques, that everything that we perceive about direction and distance, it's based on signal analysis per performed by the brains. You all of have these. Uh, certain uh, nuclei here in the brains that are uh, decoding or decoding the direction of sound all the time. And uh, we are sensitive to certain characteristics in one ear which are caused by the uh, this 
cavities in the pinna and also what kind of differences we have in uh, between the two ears. And uh, we are really estimating the most probable direction for sound just by analyzing the signals. And then it opens uh, quite many possibilities because we can fool our hearing quite easily with different audio techniques. And then we go back in time to 1995. I was a master, I had my master's already, but I was a studi student at Sibelius Academy. And I needed some fun uh, or uh, funding, uh, extra money from somewhere. And there was a small project where Sibelius Academy Chamber Music Hall has lots of loudspeakers, uh, 32 loudspeakers in the walls and ceilings. And they wanted to have some kind of a tool that when one sound comes in and then so somehow to use these loudspeakers to give a perception that sound is there or there and then to control it in, a, in some way. And uh, I had lots of ideas and enthusiasm of course that time and uh, or then I asked how sh should I do it and they gave me a paper how to do it in two dimensions. But as you see it's a three-dimensional case here and it doesn't, didn't directly solve the problem. So I was thinking for three months before starting the project and gave, came up with an idea and I directly implemented it with this nice nice hardware. This is uh, self-made analog to digital and digital to analog converters and radio loudspeakers and generic loudspeakers and custom Mac, Mac, Macintosh and, and signal processors and so on. But uh, when I really was 25 years then and I got this idea what later got this name vector based amplitude panning and it's very simple actually so you have a only single channel of audio and then you get these gain factors for different loudspeakers you just basically put the same sound signal to different loudspeakers and the person will perceive something in the middle and that's uh, that's the thing that you can fool uh, human spatial hearing easily because it doesn't happen in reality that there would be the same sound coming from all directions at the same time. Uh, then if that, but we can create with audio it and then you, uh, because then the uh, brains make the estimation that if this was a real source where would it come from? So then it estimates it to a direction where there is no, uh, no loudspeaker. So no sources. Okay, but the mathematics is very easy, simple, but it was very uh, surprising to me that time it was new thing in science and I got it published with my uh, as sole author and in a journal, which is big journal in our field. And then uh, I made my PhD on it. I generate, uh, implemented it in different platforms, I researched it that why does it work and made models of brains to understand how does it work. And I was helping people to use that system, I gave it out freely. And now it's very much uh, cited work, it's like almost 900 citations in Scholar. And if you take all of the Journal of AES papers that it ranks third nowadays. There's more than 2,000 papers there. It's, so how can it happen that a kid like that gets a novel idea like that? But it did happen and I'm here. So, and even there's some products like uh, ITU MPEG-H standard is coming uh, for broadcast and cinema. And this, this is DTSX audio format. It's for cinema and Blu-ray. So when, next time when you buy an amplifier from shop, you have to select that or amplifier that has that tag in it. So there is VBAP in and that's kind of TKK in also. And uh, also quite funnily, they in this Sony PlayStation VR, it's a, it's a head mounted display for gaming when it has headphones, it's also using this VBAP by, by some tricks, but they really use it. Okay, 
but it was completely open source and I gave it out freely and some of you or let's so how, how many of you did uh, think in your head that why didn't you patent it no <laughs> one <laughs> okay that I have heard it many times this question and but yeah I didn't have time motivation but what happened now is that it was free, I gave it to everybody, everybody started to use it and they most uh, importantly they call it VBAP and that it's made by Ville. Because it is, uh, they could have circumvented the patent anyway quite easily if I started to make a patent and so on. And it would have stopped my career because I should have started to be a, for uh, working as a uh, uh, make these products as <laughs> if I say. Okay, and this was nice thing that I got this award in SM SMT, which is the standards and techniques for cinema and television in North America mostly. I was there uh, a bit more than a year ago and I got my family there also, which was very nice. Uh, like it's not, not so easy to share things in this science, but this time I got them and Suddenly, the uh, daddy is not lame at all <laughs> when, when he can take uh, the, to the same room with George Lucas, who got also a medal there. And <laughs> so. Okay, and then after PhD, I was thinking about how to record then something. So let's say this event, and there's some sounds coming from different directions, and let's put a microphone in the middle and record it and then reproduce it back in the other side in a way that this person would perceive the same as this person. So a human here and human there. And uh, the problems in uh, it has been solved traditionally by some physical uh, ideas that let's have a this wave front and that freight wave front and analyze the wave fronts and then use physics and they lead into solutions that you have hundreds or thousands of microphones and loudspeakers and it's very cumbersome and it's still very uh, there are many problems uh, but uh, I kind of uh, used some knowledge of my what I have heard got already in the PhD work about human spatial hearing what is our accuracy there? We are very, very much limited in. Uh, so we made this technique, we call it somehow, and we transferred it to Fraunhofer in 2006. In the, uh, and we, I have some assumptions here that oh, this is just an example what we do. So when we know what, how does human hearing work, and then we, then I realized once I was sitting in airplane in a moment of kind of solitude that actually at one frequency band we can localize only one sound object at one time frequency position. And so that was then the clue that hey we can make these assumptions that if we reproduce correctly the direction diffuseness and spectrum of sound then we get, we'll get uh, better results than is uh, we get with existing techniques. And uh, that kind of thinking leads to this kind of uh, flow diagrams, which I don't go through. But the idea here is that you have a few microphone inputs and then you go to time frequency domain and then you send only one channel of audio in this case with a metadata that where is it coming and is it kind of coming from one direction or all directions. And then you have some magic here to get it audible out, but the uh, results are surprisingly and very good and we have many many versions, but maybe one of the new things that will come in the future to, I believe they will come to almost everyone, is the how to capture the reality with, this is an omnidirectional camera so it has six lenses looking at uh, different directions. And here is a microphone. It has four capsules. So 
it can record anything that it sees, or it records ev everything that it sees from any direction, and also captures all the sound, and also it has gets some idea that where is this sound coming from, and so on. So we have a, this generic representation of spatial audio, and we can use it with this technique that we reproduced. And uh, then what's nice that you can have these Oculus Rift or some other head-mounted visual display and headphones, and you will see, you can look around in that place and hear also this sounds like uh, nice statically in one direction outside of your head. And uh, we have been demonstrating it now, uh, and we have the demonstration with us, do we, Johanne? Yes, so after this show you can hear it if you are interested. And, uh, and, and finally, after working like seven years with Fraunhofer, they are now demonstrating this direct technology to the customers that, hey, we have this technology, you could, you could buy it from us. And they have, uh, they use this, my technique, to reproduce the sound over those headphones, with, which are head tracked, meaning that the movements of the listener are taken into account. Yes, and uh, it might come to everybody's home, like uh, you get very strong feeling of being somewhere else. And uh, there are, I, I would love to see this, that somebody puts one such camera in Antarctica between the penguins, and the other is on the Niagara, and something is in Paris in the center place. And then you can just, in the internet, you can get easily that uh, signals and then you could go there and listen and listen, listen and see what's happening there. And uh, at least for handicapped people it would be very nice and also there are some other things like archiving festive events like this or then, or then gaming, virtual environments or training. So, so some general ideas what's happening in audio, audio technology. So traditionally we have been delivering one signal per one loudspeaker. So if you have two loudspeakers then you deliver two signals. But this kind of techniques that we have also been developing or these old techniques didn't work or don't work very well with those cases you have a, you, you don't know how many loudspeakers you have. Like in cinemas they ha can have nowadays up to 120 loudspeakers. And also this head track headphone listening is a problem because it doesn't, it doesn't really serve the application if you just send one channel of audio. So uh, we will get this kind of generic presentation of audio <coughs> soon and we have been working on it. This is an idea, how could it be? So from any uh, recording technique or existing content, you, we can go to some format and then listen to the same with different setups. Yes, so my contributions are then, I try to tie them around this idea that we are humans, we listen to sound and we are sensitive to a certain way to sound and direction and uh, and then it just happened that uh, all these two inventions that I was talking about they are related to the thing that let's assume that uh, the listener has arbitrary number of loudspeakers at home so then uh, uh, I've kind of made these two techniques monophonic sources and record spatial sound for arbitrary loudspeaker setups. But I've been doing something else also, research on spatial resolution, laser acoustic impulses, nonlinear beamforming, and acoustical measurements of some random things, like the last slide shows this nice picture of me in a yelling against the wind. But thank you for attention and it was honor to make.